about YouTube. It's an exciting day. We're starting our first build video on this channel. Um, and it's also gonna kick off our boat build playlist. So make sure you stay tuned and let's get to it. All right guys, super exciting day. Today kicks off our first build video and it also kicks off the first video in our boat build playlist. Um, to kick the video or to kick this playlist off, we're first gonna start with installing new bunks on the trailer. Um, and really we're gonna, this first whole couple videos are gonna be focused on trailer repair and trailer fabrication or modification. So um, to, to start, we're gonna build bunks today. We're not gonna install them on the trailer. That's gonna be the next video. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button so you see when that video drops. Should be super cool. We got some really sketchy ways to pull the boat off of the trailer. I've never tried it before, but it's gonna be something new. So it's either gonna end up being a really exciting video for you guys, um, or it's just gonna give you some new way to get your boat off your trailer so you can change your bunks out. So before we get into the build today though, I first need to start by showing you guys what I've done to the boat already. So this is, this is where we're at right now. Um, I'll go ahead and put some pictures in the video of what it looked like originally. So really, as you can see, all we've done is, is gut the boat so far. And we've only made one major repair, which I'm gonna go over with you in a second, but this is a 1978 Bluefin 16 foot aluminum boat. Now, if, Bluefin is, is an odd brand. So I'll tell you, I've, I've done some research and this boat matches a Starcraft boat, exactly. It's literally the same exact hull, same exact design. So really, if you know your boats, this is a really a Starcraft hull that's been rebranded as a Bluefin. Apparently Bluefin came out for a little while, built some boats. I'm guessing they were buying wholesale hulls from Bluefin, um, and then they went out of business or sold it to another company. So again, it's really a StarCraft. Now, as far as the only repair we've made so far, you'll see is the transom. So when I start pulling all this stuff out, um, and on these old boats, it's really, really common, obviously, to have your transom rot. Um, so in this case, I knew that was gonna, before I even brought the boat home, I knew I was gonna need to replace this transom. I've taken two three quarter inch thick sheets of marine grade plywood, epoxy them together, and then through a layer of fiberglass, you may not be able to see the fiberglass. We didn't do any mat or anything crazy on this. I didn't want to add a bunch of thickness to the board. The other thing that most people do not do is these holes here. We, I pre-drilled all these holes out. So I put the piece of wood in before I fiberglassed. I drilled all these holes out and then I filled them with epoxy and I, slightly oversized the holes so that way when we go to drill our final holes through here we're drilling through straight epoxy um, and the point of that of course is to seal the inside of the holes if you guys have ever done a transom you'll know that the first place they start rotten is where you drill your holes the other important thing to note here is that again this is marine grade plywood and it is untreated do not whatever you do do not get treated plywood uh, it was common practice for a really long time but the chemicals they put in that wood coming in contact with the aluminum starts a chemical reaction and it will corrode and eat away and you'll get pinholes all through the back of your your, your transom here. I did seal the back um, and I'll put a link in the description with the type of uh, paint that I used for that. Um, it comes from Total Boat. I love all the stuff from Total Boat. Uh, their epoxy resins are really good. I've had really good luck with it. So um, I sealed this up so that way if any water gets in here, it would definitely slow the corrosion and it's, it's a barrier coat between the aluminum and the wood. Uh, so that should really prolong this. Our focus for the next couple of videos is gonna really be trailer modifications, trailer repairs, getting the trailer as good to go as I possibly can. For today's video, we're gonna be working on bunks. With that, let's get to the video. Okay guys, so let's talk about materials uh, for today's project. So this is the wood I'm using. These are two by fours. Um, I have a 16 foot boat, so it doesn't require big two by sixes. The wood choice I went with was rough sawn cedar. And the reason I went with that is because in my area, most of the two by four cedars are treated. Don't get treated wood. The rough sawn stuff has got a lot more waterproof characteristics to it um, without being treated. So it's safe for your boat and it's safe if it comes in contact with the metal. Um, it's safe for all the hardware that it comes in contact with. So. In my area, this was just the best purchase. And it's a little bit sturdier than like a standard pine. Now you could use a pine 
uh, board for this. I think if you were to do that, the smart choice would be to seal it. Another option would be Cypress. I know that works really well for salt water. There's not a lot of Cypress in my area um, and certainly not in the two by four sizes. So that's why I, I didn't go with it. it. Just depends on where you live. I think down in like Florida area, they have a lot of Cypress. These are our flashlights. These are probably about the best underwater rated LED strips you can you can buy. Now they're not cheap. I think I spent 120, 130 bucks for both of them and they're both eight foot lengths. Um, these happen to be clear. I don't need to have color changing or RGB LEDs for this. All I want is clear. Again, all we're trying to do is create a runway for our boat to come on. And that's exactly why we have clear bunks. So the LEDs will show through these. So um, this is a, a great little kit that I got from Gatorback. They send you these cool stickers too. Definitely recommend these guys. It'll come with the covers. So two eight foot length covers, end caps, the hardware to install it. Um, and that's really all you need. I also ordered my flashlights from them as well. So you can get everything kind of in the same spot. Now we will want to paint this wood because if we don't, this is clear and we'll see that wood color through it. So for aesthetic purposes, that, and, and that's it, it's literally the only reason we're going to be painting our bunks black. And I just got an outdoor rated, you know, primer and an outdoor rated semi-gloss base coat. I got my stuff from Menards. They happen to sell PPG. Uh, I, laugh, but I love PPG. I've used it throughout the years in you know, automotive paint. So um, it's a good brand. It just happens to be what Menards carries. I know a lot of the guys out there are using Rust-Oleum, uh, but I think this will work just fine. A couple other things you're gonna need, obviously some paint sticks for stirring, uh, tack cloth, it's all about that surface prep. You want to make sure you get your surface really clean uh, before you start laying on paint. Um, not that it matters all that much in this scenario, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the right way. If you guys have any questions about the stuff we're using in today's video, uh, I will link all these products in the description. So make sure you check that out. Um, and of course, post some comments. I will certainly answer any questions you guys put in the comments. So with that, let's get to the build. Step one is going to be to router out an internal groove for LED lights to sit. Second will be to prime them. Third will be to paint them. Once they're primed and painted and dried, uh, then we can lay our LED lights down the center of that groove that we just cut. After we got the, the lights in, we will cover it with our bunk covers, screw our covers in, um, put our end caps on and test the lights. All right, let's talk a little bit about the tools I'm using to run this center channel here. So uh, first off, you're going to need a router. I have the Ryobi uh, Palm router. I have an edge guide on this. This is, happens to be the Dremel edge guide. I believe Ryobi sells their own edge guide for this, but you're going to want an edge guide to keep things nice and straight. And we're going to lay this out on the center of this board. Um, if you read some instructions or watch some other people's video, they tell you to put it on the outer edge of the bunk. Uh, I think the reason being is that once you have the boat on there, it's you get more light spread um, when you're trailering down the road. Now I can say that I think most states it's illegal to run these lights while you're on the road. Uh, if you know that for sure, put it in the comments. Um, I'm pretty sure it's illegal in Iowa. I have no intention of rolling down the road with these lights on. Um, although it looks cool. The reason for this is of course to give us a runway to land our trailer on. Bit wise, um, it's going to take a half inch bit. These are a half inch wide and we can check that with some calipers just to be sure if we wanted to. Um, so if I take my calipers here and just set the depth, lock it down and we can check against our router bit here and it's the exact size. I'm going to get suited up with my dust mask. Uh, I use a full face mask. If you don't have a full face mask, then obviously eye protection and breathing uh, or respirator would be recommended. But as soon as I'm suited up here, we'll go ahead and start throwing some chips. We took that in a small pass. So I don't like to do deep passes on my router. Um, it gets a little sketchy, kicks around, um, and it's not as accurate. So 
You can whole hog it out. Uh, I think this is a quarter inch deep. I don't think I know this is a quarter inch deep, so we need to go just slightly over a quarter of an inch. Um, again, I don't recommend taking a quarter of an inch at once. I'm doing them in two eighth inch passes. Okay, so on the end of these, you'll see that it's a little thicker on the end than the half inch centerpiece. So we're gonna use a chisel and we'll chisel out a piece of the wood here on both ends to allow for this to fit sit flush. Uh, but for now, we're gonna check and make sure that our width and our depth are set properly. So obviously we wanna lay this in here and feel that it's not above at all. And this happens to be on the first try absolutely perfect so i think we're good here so all we need to do now would be to chisel out this end piece um, and then we'll do the same thing on the end there where it lines up so we'll get everything kind of lined up where it needs to go So this is where it lines up on here, um, which actually doesn't give us a whole lot of room on the end to route our wire um, for this end cap to go on. So I think what we're actually going to do uh, is we're gonna router out an edge or a groove in here down that we can run this wire down. And that way I can keep the full length of this LED strip. I don't have to cut it at all. So right now we got it laid in place. I'm just gonna mark out the spot for these end pieces where it flares out. And we'll chisel that out. All right, before we chisel in our end pieces here for these enlarged ends, I wanted to uh, bring up something. So um, these flare out wider on the end. I'm gonna, I'll show you this on the camera up close. So these flare out wider here. So we're gonna ultimately have to widen the end of the board where it fits down in. But at the same time, it's also deeper. So this piece is, um, a little bit deeper than this. And then this, of course, is still deeper than this. So when we go to chisel these out, we're also going to have to increase our depth of our cut. So where this was a half inch depth, we're going to want to leave or bring this down a little bit further so that this also sits flush with the top. Um, I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. At the same exact time, we're, we're going to need this end piece where we're going to route our wire because it's going to fold a 90 degree bend there and stick out a bit. This will also need to be deeper. So I think from here all the way down, uh, we'll run, I don't know, a three quarter inch, uh, cut. So we make sure we've got plenty of room. Um, and then we'll widen it out with our chisel afterwards. <laughs> All right, so now we have a deeper groove routed into the end and we've got a, a space for our cable to go down and our end caps to go on. Use a chisel, make sure you sharpen it, um, to knock out, to widen the top here. So we'll knock out these top edges and true up this router edge here. So we're flush on the top here. Is it gonna make a nice bend? We got plenty, we got plenty of depth here. So we got a flat, smooth surface here. And then of course it's flat all the way down to the end. So now we'll just lay this in here. So we can make sure we chiseled this out in the right spot on the other end. Doesn't have to be perfect, just set it in. So now we've got it laid in there nice. Just mark it out, pull it back, and we'll cut with our chisel.
Again, it's important to have a nice sharp chisel for everything if you want it to look good. All right, now on this end, we're gonna have the same depth issue, right? So maybe not a three quarters of an inch, but we still need to bring this depth down a little bit so that this end cap fits flush with the top. Just make a cut along this edge here. Along the sides. And we can start removing material. And we'll do a test. Now that's not sitting flush yet, so we got a little bit more to go. Again, nice sharp chisel. Makes this a whole lot easier. There we go, nice and flush. All right, so this board is prepped and ready to go. We've got our channel all dug out. Everything's recessed. We got a spot to run our wire um, so we can go ahead and remove our LED strip. Pull this out. And through the wonders of movie magic, both of them are complete. Okay, so next up, now that we've got our grooves cut for our lights, um, is to paint, actually prime, then paint these. Uh, so I'll get up, set up for painting. I'll show you how to do that on my table here without making a, a crazy huge mess. Um, I'm probably gonna hit this with a really rough grit sandpaper. Um, probably hit it with like an 80, and we'll show that coming up here in a sec. Um, I don't know that you necessarily need to, it's just because this is rough sawn wood. There's a lot of just stuff on the top surface that um, if you just wipe your hand over it, wood's coming up. So we wanna get rid of that so that way when we're not painting, we're not pulling wood chips through our, our, our paint. Um, and of course we wanna clean it. So we'll probably hit it with like an 80 grit sandpaper just to knock off that top layer and make it a little bit smoother. Uh, and then we will clean it with a tack cloth and prime it. So um, let me get set up for that and we'll be right back. All right, we're gonna hit it. Actually, I didn't have 80 grit, so we're gonna hit it with 60 grit and then see how it is. So, when I'm thoroughly dusty. Uh, I'm gonna clean all this dust up. Um, it's got, again, it's not super smooth, doesn't need to be. Um, just need to get some of that furry stuff off of it from the rough, um, rough sawn wood so that we're not dragging, you know, wood chips through our paint. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my dust, my vacuum system here. We'll get cleaned up and then we'll, uh, we'll get set up for paint. interested in seeing uh, more about the dust control system um, that I have built into my shop and my table, make sure you go check out my shop tour video under the shop maintenance playlist. All right, so make sure we want to we get our surfaces clean, of course. I always hit it with a tack cloth. Make sure a much better, easier paint process. Look at that. It's nasty in your paint. Use the brush down the center, and then we'll roll the rest 
just to get it into these cracks. So we got two solid coats of primer on this. So the next step is to paint black. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me paint in real time. So uh, I'll put you back on the time lapse. Okay, everyone, so you may or may not have noticed in the last part of this video having some issues uh, with when we got to paint in the black. So um, good example that not, or every project is not void of some small issue no matter how small it is. <laughs> Although these issues weren't that huge, um, you'll see in the video that I well, I started on the project a little late last night, so I had some responsibilities to do in the morning first. Um, so I got started later in the day. By the time I got to painting that black coat, uh, the first coat of black, it was about 10 o'clock at night. I didn't have the right size roller tray, and so I struggled to use a small one uh, that I had laying around because I couldn't go to the store and buy a new one, um, rather than just waiting until today um, and then my roller was getting stuck so it would just smear paint all over the place rather than roll and then to top it all off I was having some technical issues with the cameras where I had a um, storage issue uh, and had to offload a whole bunch of data to get more room to be able to, to continue filming so one of my cameras actually ended up cutting out during that that first coat of black so I apologize uh, for any of the technical issues it's a perfect example of sometimes it's just better to call it a day and come back to it the next day when you actually have what you need. So I went and got a, the correct size paint tray today. I solved all my data storage problems on my main camera. Uh, so I think we're good to go. Uh, again, sorry about any technical issues, but with that, we still have a final coat of black to get on there, which we're going to do right now. Um, and I will put you guys back in the time lapse for that.
All right, guys, so we've got two coats of black on here. Um, it's very well covered. I only need two, so that's great. Uh, that paint's fantastic, it's fast drying, so it didn't take much time at all to dry. Before we go into setting the lights down, you're gonna see that I'm not going to put any adhesive on here. So I suppose you could throw some silicone on it uh, to hold it down. Although just remember that this is getting a cover on the top and then end caps. So it's gonna be completely sealed inside the enclosure. It's not like the LEDs are gonna come out and they're waterproof, so that's not gonna make a, a difference. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about here is that I know these are eventually gonna rot. Out of everything we're doing on this boat, this will probably be the first thing that needs to be replaced. Um, the rest of the boat components, we're gonna over-engineer like crazy and like, probably last the rest of my life. Uh, but these will inevitably have to be replaced. So when I go to replace them, I won't be able to pull the LED lights out and I'll have to buy new ones, um, take the bunk covers off and just swap them to a new piece of wood. Uh, so if I glued them in or I put silicone in, it would make that process more difficult and it's unnecessary, so I'm not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna, again, lay my LEDs in the channels that we've created route the wires, and then we'll go ahead and start fitting up the bunks. All right, so we just get our LED strip laid out here. Um, again, no adhesive backer comes on this guy. There's no reason for it in this scenario. I believe you can order uh, this with a 3M backer, um, just not needed here. So we'll just go ahead and start laying it in the channel. I'm actually gonna pull it off of my stands. So I got some leverage. And then we'll get it rough pressed in and then go back over it with a rubber mallet. Um, this is all rubber, so you're not gonna damage it by just tapping it lightly. I wouldn't smash them with a hammer, but. And of course the paint's gonna make this a tighter fit. All right, we'll just use a rubber mallet just to get in here and screw this up as much as we can. All right, that looks pretty good. Next, we'll get our clamps out and we'll lay out our bunk covers um, before we put on the end caps. Um, it specifically says to do that in the instructions, obviously, so you can trim the excess off of the end here. It's gonna be a half inch overhang. Um, so we'll get it run and then flip it over and we'll make our cut to, to, to give enough room for the, to fit up to the end cap real nice and, nice and tight. I am just gonna quickly go ahead and clean these up a bit. They've just got some dust and dirt over them being in the shop and all the sawdust we just want it to be as clear as possible so they're as bright as possible yeah there's a lot of dirt on there all right so this is going to require some overhang here so and they, again, they give you a lot of extra. I think on this one, it's like almost a foot or at least six inches. So where we start this though, we're gonna wanna leave enough room to cut it off. I mean, we don't have to be exact. Again, I know it's a half inch. Um, so I'm gonna leave it over a half inch. Uh, and on that end, we're probably gonna have six inches. So as long as we got a little overhang, should be fine. So there's about maybe an inch and a half there. I'm just gonna use a clamp to hold it in place as I work my way down. Just like so. And obviously this is gonna take some refinement once we get it on. All 
right, so we have it roughly fit up. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we'll start at one end and start putting in screws and work our way down, refining it as we move on down the line. Um, on the side of here, they have like a, a etched groove into the side where your screw line is. Uh, and so it makes it nice and easy to get the, the tip of the screw started since there's a groove in there for you. So there's no need to drill a pilot or any of that. I did contemplate putting 5200 on the screws um, just to seal up going into the wood, but they're clear. And if I put a bunch of white or black 5200 on here, it, you're gonna see it and it's gonna look like a nasty mess. So I, I, I don't wanna do that. I mean, at the end of the day, we have exposed wood to water anyway. It's not gonna make that big of a difference. Now, I don't think you need to over tighten there. When I did that first one, um, you can see the bottom start to splay out. So no need to go too tight. Just keep an eye on it. So per the instructions, it says this first screw should be three quarters to an inch away from the end of the board. Um, the second one should be an inch from the first one. And then every additional screw should be six inches. Um, of course, we're not gonna measure them out. We're just gonna eyeball it as we go, but we could probably get pretty, pretty close to evenly spaced. I'd say that's about an inch. give you a metric ton of screws so I'm guessing we'll have some extras left over too if we got to come back in and add some more although we do have to do two bunks all right it seems pretty easy I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put you guys back on the time lapse Okay, now that we got our cover on and fit into place, uh, we can go ahead and start working on getting the end caps uh, buttoned up. Like we talked about further or earlier in the video, um, we left some overhang on the end specifically so that we can come right up to the end of this end cap. Um, and there's even more extra on the end. We're gonna be cutting it off here in a minute. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Uh, so with that, let's get to it. I'm gonna start by flipping this board over. This is the easiest way I found to do this. We're gonna need a knife. Um, good idea to make sure you get a new razor in there you want nice and sharp, it's gonna help you. So here are the caps. Um, and again, I'll show you on the other camera here. You got this recessed area which is meant to butt up against this. Um, and this is that half inch overhang that we left at the beginning of the video. So basically what we're gonna do is we are gonna just fit this in here. This recessed spot goes to the top of the bunk. We're just gonna hold it in there the best we can. We're gonna use my knife. I'm gonna make just a cut to mark it. And then the same on this other side, using the cap as a guide. Now we can go ahead and pull the cap off. And we'll use our nice sharp razor to make a cut all the way down on both sides. Just take your time. And cut all the way through that bottom if you can. Now for the bottom edge, the key here is that there's these ribs. So you don't want to try to cut the whole thing in one go. 
do a nice light just scoring run and then the second pass will be much easier just making sure to keep it straight Now, if you take, and I kind of screwed up my cut there, I'm gonna go ahead and redo that. Now, once you score it, you can kind of bend it and fold it over and it'll expose these bottoms. It makes it a lot easier to cut. flip it over and clean it up. Once we get our cap on there, we'll clean it up even more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this, again, recess side up in here, and you can kind of see how it lines up on the, if you look on the bottom, these should go this edge here should line up with this edge here. So I'm just gonna line it up and then use the screws that they provide to sink it in. Make sure you get your wire tucked into that channel. Nice and lined up. send it. Like so. Flip it back over. And then trim any excess if you need to. We actually look pretty good here, so. I think we're good. Now we'll just repeat on the other side. And there you have it. So that wraps up the first bunk. Um, so now we just need to replicate this on the second bunk. And using movie magic, we have the second one. All right, everybody, it's time for the reveal. They're super bright, really straight. I'm really happy with that. So I look with the lights on. Still really bright with the lights on. All right guys, that wraps up this first part of the bunk build um, and this video. So thanks for watching. As usual, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you get notifications on the, when the next video drops. We're gonna be lifting the boat off of the trailer and building brackets for the bunks and mounting the bunks to the trailer. Uh, should be a super interesting video because lifting the boat off the trailer should be interesting. I'm, I'm going to do it with a couple shop winches and I've never done it before. So it's either going to go really smooth and give you guys a, a really great way to move your boat off of your trailer in your garage, or it's going to be a disaster, but probably will be even more entertaining for you guys. So again, stay tuned, check out the next video. Thanks for watching.